In our rush to launch, something was missed in our systems check before BASIC hit the water. Our port engine did not fire up and BASIC is still hanging in the slings with the Cabrales crew anxious to have us back out of the slot. Okay, Let's so try to start it again. Start it. Try starting it again while I'm down here, please. Okay. Yeah. The problem is that Penasco has a huge tidal swing, and three boats are scheduled to launch within two hours of each other. We are the second boat in the order, which means that if we have to be rehauled, the third boat would have to launch in extremely shallow water conditions. With the tide ebbing quickly, the crew scrambles to diagnose the issue. Try it again! Now with no other option, we must back out of the staging area under one engine. One of the yard guys, Poncho, had jumped aboard at the last moment to help keep BASIC off the wall and now will be going for a short ride to the other side of the harbor. I'm going to steer you, okay? Okay, let go. Okay, Lynn, you hear me? Yep. Okay, just keep going. How are you going? Now, I'm going to get the fenders down as low as you can over there. Yeah. Put the big ones out as far down as you can. Okay. We'll go over to that dock. Okay. Who says that boating is boring? Because uh, our, it looks like we're having some issues with the starter uh, engine, or the, sorry, the starter on the port engine so um, obviously we're not going to head out of port with that disabled so we're going to um, go to the final tour marina and then uh, Teal's going to take apart our starter and there's a guy at the yard that knows how to fix it so hopefully um, that is going to be an easy fix and we can get out of here Hi. otherwise <laughs> oh, geez, I really hope we get out of here soon. <laughs> otherwise um, yeah guess uh we're going to be staying in Penasco for a little bit longer. Hi. Start slowing down. And I can push you with this. Just go forward a little bit more. Okay. And then I'll rotate you. 
And then, Em, you'll have to go over there and throw lines to Poncho. Okay. Just come in just how you are. We were premature in thinking that Basic was now in a safe place to resolve our engine issue. We cast our lines to the marina crew, who swiftly tied us up and then asked us to leave. Basic has twin engines 23 feet apart. At low speed and one engine, the boat wants to spin in its own footprint. So Lynn did an amazing job jockeying us around. We could see an empty end tie a short distance away, so we limped over to it using the same steering technique and secured Basic. Okay, we're gonna start running through everything. Starter, batteries, could be the starting battery, we're not sure. Here, hand me the light. It is a little low, well a lot low, isn't it? Yes. The voltage is going to the battery to charge the battery, but the battery uh, was not, didn't have enough uh, cold cranking amps to turn over the engine. That's there all. Go. <laughs> that was it. Holy cow! Woo! <laughs> Emma is so excited now. Her heart like yeah, sank. Water. Her heart sank because she thought we were gonna stay I here don't for Christmas. Stay here. I wanna, I wanna go and anchor out for okay. Christmas. Let's raise the dinghy. Let's get going. Go. Yay! Wait. Get over that side. Let's go for this. <laughs> That's teamwork, guys. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Right. Much nicer having two engines. I know, but we don't need them. <laughs> we won't once we get out of here, but in a tight, restricted area like this, it's a near impossible to steer when your engine is so far offset. I mean, if we had some speed, it's easier, but we had no speed. So it was tough, but we managed. Crisis averted. Thank you for having a small wife. That's right. They could <laughs> fit into tight places. And... Well, we knew it was one of two things, either the starter or the battery. The voltage was there. I had a feeling it was the battery and not the starter. We haven't put that much hours on this. And then it, we have been in really extreme hot conditions and we left the boat for, or the boat's been on the hard. For a while. For a while. I know. You know, it's so silly. I meant to check those yesterday during my pre-engine check. But you don't fit. I, well, you know what it is? I'm so used to the lithium now. I just, it just, I overlooked the fact that we have two lead acid batteries. Do we have to have lead acid battery starters? Well, we have them, so. I know people use lithiums for starters, but uh, we're not yet. <laughs> All right. Hello, Pinasco. Yep. Woo! Goodbye, Pinasco. Hello, see you, Cortez. Okay, life jackets. Yep. Open ocean. Here we come. They're massive.
They're just a massive dolphin. Look at these things down here. Well, we sailed through the night and had to reef the jib in a couple hours ago to slow us down just to get the right timing to get in here right at daybreak. Looks like we nailed it. We're about two miles out. Sun's just coming up. We'll have enough visibility to sneak in through the northern passage here to get into the anchorage. And this is why we wanted to hit this during the day. Look at the gap here. It's shallow on either side. There's a slot right down the center. Ah, it's flattening out nicely in here. Refugio. Looks like we'll uh, drop an anchor here and uh, address our little impeller problem that we just found out about. Started the engine, no water. Everything's primed and looking good. Just sitting on the hard for so long, it must have dried it out. And we're back. Refugio is looking pretty good. What do you think of the first passage, Captain? A couple of little hiccups. Yeah, but that's to be uh, expected. I know, we'll, we'll iron it out this morning. Well, we've got one ironed out, now we have to do the other. You were right. The engine sounded funny. Fired it up here after sailing, and uh... No I'm water. really in tune with the sounds of no, our no engine. No water came out. Luckily, uh, Lynn caught it in time. But it sounds like, or kind of looks like a impeller. Makes sense after being in on the hard, and it was all dry and hot up there. But it ran yesterday afternoon when we were running it, just this morning. Well, I'll tear into it and see what it looks like. Overall, I think it was a good sail. I mean, we actually had to uh, reef everything reef in. Reef everything in because we were going too fast. To so we the... would hit this place in the dark. So. <laughs> Look at this. Looks good though. I thought it was kind of funny. You like put the jib up. The, the our little jib was only out about this much and we were still doing three to four knots but we timed it perfect didn't yeah we? i don't think i ever want to go in here in the dark okay well, let's go grab a cup of coffee and then i'll tear into that impeller time to relax unwind to relax. <laughs> you do some engine work i know but you know what i mean i do at least we're not out in that bumpy sea state yeah Compass did so good. I think he was ready to go back out, huh? Yeah. Him and his ball. <laughs> well, I hope this is it because that would make sense. Let's check it out. I hope that looks good. Impeller's good. With the pump? No, it's not the pump. Pump's moving. It's not leaking. It looks dry in there. Well, yeah, it's dry. Actually, it can't be that dry. All this water just came out. Oh. What do you think? 
plate looks perfect. I mean, this is a new pump. It's got to be this. Hang on. Oh, it, crap, it is. Look at The fins are broken off. Every one. There's cracks in it. You can't see it till you move it. Look at that. Yep. Yep, they all failed. Oh, God, easy fix. Well, yeah, it's easy because we have spares. Pull this out and check it out. Yep, that's it. Look at that. They're all getting ready to fail. Look at that. Don't do that. Well, I can't use it again. Oh, man. That's got to be it. Look at that. Okay. Whew. Easy fix. Yeah, let's put this thing back together. I'll go grab my spare parts. Okay, better order some more. We're down to eight spares. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Did I go a little crazy on ordering impellers? Well, I'm glad you did. I think it's because the last time on our last boat that happened as well. I know. And that scared the crap out of me. And so I never want to go without impellers. Or belts, remember that? Or belts, yes. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I went a little overboard. But all for good reason. My fingers are all slippery with glycerin. I don't want to drop one of these little guys. Loosen this up a little. Starting on the engine to make sure that that was what the problem was. And I'm gonna go check for water. It still sounds the same to me, like there's no water coming out. But then I hear something gurgling. A little bit of water. After testing it out with the new impeller, it worked, but not quite well enough. No. Not enough at all. So we're realizing this is a a repeat of what happened the last time we hauled out, which was barnacles in the heat exchanger. So our trusty barnacle buster. Okay, so here's the thing. We ran out of buster and just so happens that we are in an anchorage with two other boats and uh, they happen to have it. And we bartered for it. We bartered. We traded. Uh, they needed a bulb for their um, fuel line for their dinghy. And we needed the barnacle buster. I say that's a fair trade. Yes. Gets them mobile and hopefully this gets us mobile. <laughs> well, we're mobile. Yeah, we it's just not engine. fun having a, an engine. Okay, Ham. Go ahead and uh, turn it on. Disabled. Okay. good? Yep. Ooh, I see stuff coming out already. Yes, look at seaweed. Hopefully this gets black with debris. So I'm running this backwards through the engine. I'm going in through the heat exchanger from the backside to flush anything out and coming out through the intake. Oh, it's getting milky and... Yeah, but you know, it's not real clogged, because look at this flow. If that's going through, why isn't our water going through? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Well, One just... solution at a time. Literally. A solution? <laughs> really. Okay, Phil. <laughs> God, with the dad jokes. <laughs> That is one hour of flushing the system. I'm not convinced this is going to fix it because the second I kicked it on, water flowed through there. The solution just flowed through smoothly. So it doesn't feel plugged. The other thing I think it could be is that we were in a real choppy state 
somehow I got air into the engine and there was uh, an airlock going in here. But by pumping the solution through, it should fix that. So I'm gonna put it all back together and um, test it up, test fire it, see what happens. Well, it doesn't hurt to do this. It's good routine maintenance anyway. Nice and clean. Yeah. <laughs> Is that your happy dance? It's my happy dance. <laughs> it's working. Ah, uh, finally. So, impeller definitely needed to be replaced. We did a maintenance with the uh, uh, barnacle, barnacle bust, buster. buster. It's hard to say for me. I keep saying blaster in my mind. Barnacle buster. Um, it did clear out a bunch of debris. But while we were doing that, we were pressurizing the system from the back side. I think there was an air lock inside of our heat exchanger. And that's why it wasn't able to suck in. Oh. Kind of primed everything perfect. What we did is we put the whole system back together, ran the pump in reverse to prime the system from the back side, fired it up, and blam. We got, Bam. We got water. Bam. <laughs> we got water. We have water. So let's uh, run it through for a little bit, get the soot out of there. Yes, please. And then uh, shut it down. Go look, is it still going? Yeah, I think so. We have water. It feels good to chase the gremlins out of our port engine and finally be back on the water. Our journey south will be new and exciting for the crew this year. We will cover our cruising plans in next week's video. A special thanks goes out to our patrons, whose support drives the production of our videos. Join our crew if you can. Our push south continues as we pick up the pace as we sail basic down the Sea of Cortez. Come back next week to see where we're at. See you then!